NFL Week 9 Gambling Picks, the Halloween edition of the show. <laughs> Final segment of the, of the show. Believe that. All right, so it's brought to you by Tunica, Mississippi, the South's yep. premier sports gambling destination. They got six incredible sports books down there at Samstown, Hollywood, First Jackpot, Fitz Casino, Gold Strike, and the Horseshoe. Nailed it. You can go check out all of them over at tunicatravel.com. You can find our picks, our previews, all that wonderful stuff over at winningcureseverything.com. You can also enter the picks contest. You're going to pick 10 games against the spread. You got seven college, three NFL games. Look, we're going to give you the line that we like. You just pick against it, see what you think, put a tiebreaker in there. Last week, Donald B. from Corning, Arkansas, went eight and two. He uh, he won technically because I can't win, although I did win the uh, the pool last week. Okay. Uh, but I'm with not going to take the prizes from you Look, with some shenanigans. At, oh, there ain't no he, shenanigans he earned it. Here. I'm just kidding. I'm just ain't joking. No, no, ain't no, no, no shenanigans here. By the way, plenty of integrity. Whenever you get the uh, whenever you get the pool, it will have my picks and Chris's picks on that spreadsheet. You don't have so, to worry about me. And so whenever you hey, you've done pretty well some weeks. So not last week. Last week you had what five wins? I think. I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it was. Yeah, I think you went five and five last week. Um, as far as our Never actual picks go, odds. last week NFL Week Eight, we both went three and two against the spread. So winning week, not bad. That's right. It did not really help me get back to five hundred. Not yet. You still got a little bit to go. I'm eighteen twenty one and one on the year. You are twenty one sixteen and three. Had so you good, were doing pretty well. Had a good good NFL season. Let's uh let's go on and jump into this. Made you want to give me Sunday. you want to give me your game one? Uh yeah, my game one. The Kansas City Chiefs are coming into Cleveland, and they are minus nine and a half, and that is not nearly enough points. <laughs> Craig Williams, not a great defensive coordinator. Pretty sure he's not going to be a great head coach. Okay. Um, and you got an offensive coordinator that's uh, never called plays. Never called Pretty plays good. before in our life. I, I, I really don't know what we're going to look like. I guess the only thing you can hope for being a Browns fan is sometimes chaos seems to work out. In like, if you're a major underdog, you just you just disrupt as much as you can disrupt and hope that the ball bounces your way. I don't know. The Chiefs are really good. The Chiefs are probably going to score a lot. This is under 10 points. I have no idea why it's under 10 points, but take the Chiefs, take all the money in the world, and just put it on the Chiefs. I got the same thing. <laughs> Chiefs minus nine. I got it at nine. Uh, it's up to nine and a half now. Yeah. Um, everything that he just said. I mean, it's, it's Sunday. It's a noon game. Chiefs got to travel to Cleveland. Don't think it matters. Nope. No. This is uh, The Chiefs are 7-1 and one against the spread so far this year. Um, I make that seven and two. I don't know. I don't. They didn't cover last week. I don't so, know the answer to you. They, they were a ten point favorite against the Broncos. Whatever. Uh, this is not the Broncos. This is a a bad organization right now. Um, and they got a chance to fix it, but they ain't gonna fix it in a week. So Chiefs minus nine and a half. Which game number two? Game number two is one of the most ridiculous lines I've seen in a while as well. Two teams coming off a bye. Tennessee Titans needle a bye. A lot of guys hurt, a lot of guys injured. I got a plus six and a half. This game opened at four and a half. Everybody's betting on the Cowboys. Look, I know the Cowboys play pretty good at home. But come on, man. This Cowboys team is a joke. You think getting Amari Cooper back in there, not back, but but in there is going to help you? No. You handled the first round pick away, so you didn't have to worry about drafting a bust. You just went ahead and took somebody who is a bust. Okay? That's what I got to say <laughs> about that. He He had two really good seasons. And then after that, he's been garbage. Okay, I think the Titans gonna win this game. Oh, you gonna have some money line I, action? I'm, I'm on. gonna sprinkle I'm gonna have money some money line. line action on this game. I like the Titans. Now I get sucked into our Titans a lot. I buy in a lot to Tennessee. But this is a team that can drag you into the mud, and I, I and they were very close in London. Yeah, uh, against a a, a a really good yeah. Chargers team. Yeah, I mean that's a two point conversion away from walking away with a W. Yeah, you're right about that. So I. I like the Titans. I think a week to an extra week to prepare benefits the team that's better coached. And with what seven games under his belt, I, I think everybody in the league would would say that Vrabel's a better coach than Garrett. Garrett. Yeah, right now, absolutely. So, game number two for me, 
Falcons at the Redskins. I like the Redskins minus one and a half at home. Look, it's right before the bye week. That is the craziest shock I've ever heard. I just <laughs> knew you were going to bet on your Falcons. Nope. I knew nope. It. Here, Here's the deal. You pulled the old okie doke on the Falcons me. Have I love beat, it. The Falcons have beaten two bad teams in a row. Yep. The Redskins have got a chance to run away with this division. They, You have to seize these opportunities. you got to take advantage of your home games. It's Sunday at noon. Redskins defense, I think, shuts down the Falcons at least enough to where – that they will they will cover the one and a half. I think this is going to be if you're if you're a well coached football team in Washington, this has to be your classic ball control, slow the game down, hold the ball, hold the ball, hold the ball, hold the ball, big yeah. field goal, score touchdowns, and and just don't let the other team on the field. Yeah, because their defense is garbage in Atlanta. Exactly. Man, I love that pick, and I was so I, I knew you were going to take Atlanta. Man, good <laughs> up on you. My third pick. I think the wrong team is favored here. I got the Chargers plus one and a half going to Seattle. Okay. I know that Seattle has played well lately, and I know that Seattle looks good. Seattle used to be an impossible place to go up and win, and it's not that anymore. The Chargers never have a home field advantage, so playing on the road does not bother them. I think they're a top five, top six team in the league, man. They're coming off a of bye. I know that bye week teams are only like 50-50, so the bye doesn't really matter. I like this Chargers team a lot. If Melvin Gordon is healthy, now I will tell you this, come game time, Melvin Gordon is not playing, be careful. I think that guy's a game changer, though. Yeah, I think he is. He's supposed to be back. He's supposed to, hey, if he's healthy, he's in, I'm in. I'm all in. I like the Chargers. I think they'll win the game. Game number three for me, the Lions at the Vikings. I like the Vikings minus four here. Vikings took one on the chin at home against the Saints. Before that, they'd won three straight ball games. The Lions did not look right at home against Seattle. I don't think going to Minneapolis fixes that problem. Sunday is 12 p.m. on Fox. Um, look, this line opened at 7. And I kept looking for any reason why people would be putting their money on the Lions so much that it brought it all the way down to 4. I guess because it's a divisional game, maybe. I mean, it's um, got to be it. But Vegas, obviously, there was a reason why it was a seven-point line. I think something's fishy here. I'm going to go with the Vikings minus four. They just keep bringing this line down, and it's it's money coming in on the lines. I had to double-check that. You know, because sometimes, like, more money comes in on the Vikings, and they'll just keep dropping the line. It's not that. It is actually money coming in on the line. I guess they expect a bounce back after that loss to Seattle. Look, I was I was riding with the Lions for a little bit. I actually bet on them last week. Yeah. I'm going against them this week. I like the Vikings to uh to bounce back here after that loss against uh against the Saints. I think they cover the four pretty easily. My number four game, look it is it is not advisable to continue to bet on Brock Osweiler. This will be your number three game. One, two, Four. Chiefs, Titans, Chargers. I'm sorry. My apologies. Dolphins. I did number three last <laughs> Minus three at home against the Jets. Look, I I, I know Brock Osweiler isn't, isn't great. But I think this Jets team is in a little bit of a trouble here. They're coming on the road. Miami's still going to be a little warm and, uh, and, and muggy. They play good at home. Adam Gase, pretty good coach. I think he'll have his team kind of rallied around figuring this offense out. I think Osweiler is going to get better the longer he's in this system with Gase. And I just cannot believe in the Jets right now. I just can't do it. Sam Darnold is looking like every rookie in the world used to look, which turnover galore, can't hold on to the football, just just telegraphing his his uh, his passes. Everybody in the whole stadium knows where they're going. I, I think he's going to be a good quarterback. I think it's going to take some time, and I think the defense of the Dolphins is good enough. Shake him up, break him up, figure this thing out. I think the running game looks good. If if uh, Parker plays, Parker looked dangerous the other day. I like the Dolphins, man. I can understand that. Minus three, give me the Dolphins. Game number four for me. Pittsburgh Steelers. 
plus three at the Ravens. This line stinks. There's something fishy about the line. I, I, I will admit I that. Don't. But I will say this. Look, it's Sunday. It's a noon game. CBS. It's not a night game. It's not a you know afternoon whatever. It is just early ball game in Baltimore. Uh, the Steelers have looked significantly better the last few weeks. The Ravens have looked significantly worse the last few weeks. They've been making mistakes. They've been like, and and I think the Steelers are going to win the game outright. I feel like this is a revenge spot for them after the Ravens absolutely embarrassed them earlier in the year. You know, in Pittsburgh, uh, Roethlisberger always seems to do pretty well when he goes on the road in the division. I'll, I'll take the Steelers here. I'll take the plus three. Seems like a lot of points. This line stinks. I, oh, I agree. And we'll I, talk about I, it whenever I lose it. But you I, know. I just feel like there's something fishy. But here. I, I could I could not me. take the Ravens on it. No, God no. Um, but the the Steelers, like I, I'll take that. I'll take that plus three. My last game, I'm taking. Forty one year old Tom Brady, minus five and a half. Got this punk named Aaron Rodgers coming into your house. Everyone calling him the GOAT. One championship, couple of playoff wins. Please. Are you kidding me? This Patriots team gets up for big games. This is Sunday Night Football. Al Michaels is going to be in the house. Chris Collinsworth. The Patriots are going to put up lots and lots of points. I don't know if Sony Michelle will be back. Don't know. Don't care. They'll find somebody to tote the rock. (laughs) <laughs> don't know if Gronk can get free catch passes. Is his back okay? Don't know. Don't care. Don't care. Somebody's going to catch passes. This defense will make plenty of plays. Aaron Rodgers is going to get loose. He's going to throw some balls way up in the air, and somebody's going to run through and catch them. That's going to happen a couple of times. You can't sustain drives doing that. You can't continue to try and win just pulling balls out your butt. Give me the Patriots. Less than a touchdown at home, they're going to kick their ass. Game number five, Rams at the Saints. I got the Saints at minus one and a half today. Saints are 10-0 and against the spread in October the last three seasons. I think the streak continues. I think the Rams are ripe for an upset. Uh, that game last week, I think they they wanted to make sure they got the game at home. I think they understand they are going to lose at some point this season. What better place for that to happen than down in New Orleans? Listen, right? Louisiana is right this weekend. Yes, absolutely. Okay. You got the Rams coming to town. You You're got the Crimson the, Tide coming to take town. Take down Alabama on Saturday. Take down yeah, the Rams on Sunday. Let's not get crazy about the Life Alabama is game. Good. Here. Sunday, Everything's going right. Three twenty-five p.m. on Fox. I like the Saints to win this game, uh, definitely by more than one and a half points. Uh, I, I look for this to be a uh, field goal game, field goal game, touchdown, touchdown game. game. Yeah. I, mean, I don't think there. it's going to be a blowout, but yeah, one score game, but yeah. one and a half, you're just picking a winner, man. Exactly. And I'm picking the Saints to win this one at home. They'll be happy to be back home after being at the Ravens <sighs> and at Mini, uh, Minneapolis last week. Yeah, they've been on the road. Eh? It's a tough road game. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right. We normally do a recap. We ain't doing that this week. Go over to winningcureseverything.com or you can just rewind the video, Watch check the video. that bad boy out. We'll see you guys, uh, what, next week? Next week. Da, da, da. Happy Halloween, everybody. See you guys.